Okay, on this table we were looking at electronic feedback, what's working for you, tips and tricks. And really the driver for this topic was the fact that the, the university has kind of unilaterally moved towards electronic feedback on almost all assessments now. So um, really our discussions were, were around what sorts of types of electronic feedback we were already using and some of the pitfalls and, and, and benefits of these different types of feedback. And really what came out is actually there's quite a wide range of different types of feedback. Most people were, were familiar with, with Grademark and probably that was the kind of the main workhorse in terms of the electronic feedback. But there's there's quite a lot of other things. So like for instance, I and quite a lot of colleagues use screencast feedback now. Some colleagues just use audio feedback. Um, we have difficulties arising when we have people who are marking students that don't have access to the Keo system. So they may be just sort of communicating by email and things like this. Um, and we've got situations where actually the, the tools that we have available to us aren't actually fit for the purpose that we want them. And that's why the, we've got sort of developers producing their own bespoke applications, like what Adrian was talking about this morning. Um, and this brought up a couple of issues, really. First of all, there's a lot of different types of feedback out there. So students are actually being exposed to lots and lots of different types of feedback. They may have to access that in different ways. That could be off-putting for them. So we talked about maybe there could be somewhere where we had a central hub where all the feedback for that particular student was, was listed. So they had a central portal to access that feedback. Um, but it also brought up the issue that we, we actually need staff and student training on how to use and access these different types of feedback properly because there are some students that don't necessarily know how to use PebblePad and it's not it's not the most intuitive thing to use PebblePad if you've never used it before. I mean I became quite familiar with it myself because I had to do an assessment that was using PebblePad but you can only really get to know these things by actually using them. And so we need to have kind of continual staff training and it needs to be something that is compulsory for staff. They can't just say, oh no, I don't know how to do it because we do have lots of training programmes in place for these things and, and the people that need to be going are not going to. Yes, yeah, so mandatory training if we're bringing in a new system is he's really got to be reinforced. Uh, just picking up on a, the first one of the first of the points you made, in terms of using electronic submission return of work, uh, my own sister is a nurse tutor down at Salford University and blames me personally for the fact that she's got repetitive stress because she used to be able to sit under an apple tree and mark her assignments holding a glass of wine in one hand and nowadays she has to sit hunched over her desk and I say, as she's a nurse herself, she should op uh, consult occupational health and make sure she's sitting in a comfortable mm -hmm. position and her desk is at the right height. Also, there's, as well. there's a serious point behind that though, which is that students probably love electronic feedback and return of work. We don't know yet because we haven't done enough research on it. What we do know is that students whose first alphabet isn't the alphabet that we use in the UK really love it. Students who are dyslexic who can use filters to read really love it. There is some growing evidence that students, particularly if you're using something like Gradebook, get a feeling that it, this isn't as personal as it used to be. And so I think if we are going to use electronic return, we have to be really careful about making sure that we include an idiosyncratic element to it. Um, the other point you, you picked up on, which I, I felt, thought was worth commenting on, was the whole area of the fact that when students are receiving lots of different kind of feedback, they don't always recognise it as feedback. So there are some universities which are struggling under the NSS COSH, who have issued their staff brackets, I think this is a silly idea, with little... Um, Flashcards they hold up so that when they're giving feedback, I think that's a silly idea. So what what you know, sorry? Stamp. We had a stamp, an electronic yeah. stamp. However, to. what I do think is worth doing is talking to the students, particularly in January or so, about what feedback is like and the fact that you have oral feedback, written feedback, video feedback, so that they don't just, when they're filling in those forms, rely on what they've seen written on their assignments.